friends, Jerry Rosie here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Just been working my fingers to the bone and uh, you know, burnout, it can definitely happen, trust me. I uh, seemed like I work 24-7 in the shop anymore. I know I had put out a video said I was going to uh, just work in the mornings. Well, that didn't happen because the waiting list just got longer and longer and longer. And presently, there's more than 60 people on the waiting list waiting to ship instruments to me to repair. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I'm just, I just don't know. It's, it's, you know, a lot of people could just ignore that and not let it bother them, but it bothers me, I gotta tell you. Anyway, here we are. We've got a rack here, another Regal rack. This would be Regal rack number two. But in this case, it's a mandolin, and in this case, it is a huge crack down through here. I can feel it all the way down through here with my finger. I don't even have to look at the screen there. Um, so it goes all the way down. And according to the customer's note, the crack was only an inch long when he looked at it one day and then like a few days later, it was like this. So there's a lot of stress. I can tell there's stress pushing this top, top apart. But anyway, we'll do the best we can with it. This is a budget job. This, this particular customer that owns this has brought a lot of instruments to me. This, this is a walk-in. And he's brought a lot of instruments to me. He's a very good customer, so I am not knocking the customer at all. He, he but he, this is a budget instrument to him, uh, and he just wants to do a budget job. So we're going to try to do it as quick as we can, quick and dirty, without breaking the bank. That means we're not taking it apart, no matter what it needs, <laughs> you know, because that's just way too much time and effort involved. So, uh, but it's a pretty cool mandolin, and I do think we can salvage this without going crazy on it. I can flex the joint back together, but it's uh, it's a pretty tight flex to get it to go back together. We'll just do the best we can. Well, we got her down here on the bench, and you know, the first thing you gotta do with something like this is decide, how am I gonna clamp that? Well, you know, I've got these clamps here for violins that I made, and they're not gonna work. And you might get one to work across here if it was wide enough, but they're not. So I can make one of those, but then that only clamps it in this one spot. And that's, you know, and you can't clamp them here because they just slide right off. So, you know, you got a problem here. How are you gonna clamp this? So it's, it requires thinking outside the box because any kind of clamp you put on here is just gonna slide down. Here's my anti-sliding device right here. What I'm gonna do is put these on here. I've already sanded these smooth, real smooth. You know, I've even beveled the corners so they shouldn't scratch up the instrument at all. I'm going to use some kind of clamp, something like this probably, that will go across here. The thing about that is you can't just put a clamp there and a clamp here because it's still going to rock. So what I'll do is I'll put a slight amount of pressure here right now on this, on this upper end. And now we can squeeze this and I think it's going to push it together. Yeah, it's already got it together here. Don't have to put that much pressure on it either. It's looking pretty good. That also lets me line up all this other stuff here that's broke right through here. There's stuff broke around the sound hole and I can, once I get it in place, I can line it up. But that looks like that's gonna work really well. That's, you know, that's what you call clamping out of the box. No, thinking out of the box, I guess. You gotta do what you gotta do, you know, and that's a quick and dirty way to make it work. Do the job for the customer quick and easy and not cost him a lot of money. And I think that's gonna work. So we'll take these clamps off, we'll get the glue in that crack real well, and we'll push her back together. Well, you've seen here I've added water to the crack first, to all the cracks. That helps the glue wick down in there better. Then I use the force of the bottle itself to force the glue down in the crack, and I can see it's penetrated way down in there already. And just, I mean, that's like using a syringe, if you will. I think it works better than the syringe myself. 
in a case like this. Now, in other cases, a syringe would be better, but in this case, this is the best way to do it, I feel. Now, I've got that in there really well, and I can see it pumping through, and that pumping action also sucks glue down in the cracks, so that's always a good thing to do. I've got some extra blocks here to support this. That'll hold it up to the right height. Now I think I'll use this one first because I think this is a little harder clamp to operate and it'd be a good place to start right here in the middle. Yeah, that's good. I like that. That's it's coming together nicely in the middle there. You can even see the glue squeezing out in all, all the way along the crack. So it's very good and that's really pumping it out up here now. So that looks good. So now what we'll do is just clean off the excess glue first. Make sure it's good and flat and level. Looks real good. Even really better than I thought. I kind of didn't think we'd get this back together very well, but this looks real good. I don't think you could hardly do it much better. Spot right here where the binding is sticking up, and I'm gonna see if I can push that down in there where it should be. And I can also tell that the binding itself is somewhat loose in here, so it'd be nice if I could spread that binding back out. So I don't see a good simple way to do it, so we'll improvise. We'll put these in here, and then we'll just put some wedges in here and, and tighten that binding up by wedges. And you can see it's working because there's glue squeezing out. Hopefully you can see that. Hopefully you can see that there's glue squeezing out there just from putting that wedge in, which I think is a good thing. That seems to have made it just about perfect. I don't see you could get it much better than that. And the top is just about as level as you could ever want it. We'll just let her rest like that now for a couple hours. Right here I still see a little problem. Uh, the binding's not up tight again. But I think we can maybe do the same kind of process. Wedge something in here and push the binding in right here. Because the I know it doesn't show up on the camera very well right there, but this binding right here is not pushed in tight. And we can devise something to fix that, I think. A piece of leather up against the mandolin. And that'll keep it from slipping so much. And now I'll put a wedge in here. And jam it in there, and that's pushed it up pretty tight, it looks like. That went back together pretty well. Considering how bad it looked a little while ago, that looks really good. <laughs> Show you what that looks like when it dries. Well, it's been about three and a half hours in these clamps, so let's take the clamps off and see what we ended up with. Pretty sure the glue's going to hold it, even though I do think there's some stress there. That tight bond's pretty good stuff once you get it. If you get it in there good, you know, and I think we did. There's a ton of dust down in this thing, so I'm gonna vacuum it out real good. This back seam feels like it could be loose too. I think it is. And we'll try to float a little glue in there and see if we can't clamp that too. Got the little paintbrush. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this center seam. It's not busted open, but it's got little hairline cracks through it. I think if we just force the glue in there, I think I think it'll go down in there, especially if we wet the seam down real good. Again, super glue would be the easiest, but the problem with the super glue is it's going to screw up the little bit of finish that's left there, and you know that's not a good thing. It's you can't really disguise it; you, it'll show one way or the other. So super glue is a good choice, but but the uh, Wood glue won't leave any residue or any sign that it's been re-glued. So that's assuming I can get some glue down in there though. It is harder to get glue in there, there's no question. But if I use the nozzle like a uh, syringe and force the glue in there, even though I'm probably wasting a lot of glue here, not that much, but some, but I'm using the pressure of the bottle to squeeze it into that crack. And then you can paint it into the crack 
with the brush, it gets in there pretty good. It gets in there better than you might think. I can see glue down in the little tiny crack, so it's working, I know that. I'm using some boards on the front to prop the neck up a little bit to keep it good and flat and level. I think this is going to work just fine. Try to clamp it towards the top here mostly. You can see a little bit of glue squeeze out there. Not very much, I'll admit, but I can see some coming out, so it's an indication that it's working. Yeah, I can definitely see the glue moving around in there as I do this even. The only problem I got with this is it might not be clamping it tight enough. Ah, there it is, I think. Maybe I just clamped it a little tighter. Now it looks like it's in there pretty solid. I'm going to try and just put a little more glue in there, even though it's kind of a mess. Especially down on this end. And I'll just paint it in there again just to make sure it's full. I think we'll let that set a few hours now and I think we'll be good to go. The camera filled up with uh video so I couldn't really film the last little few processes which was stuff I've filmed many times before basically just leveling the fretboard and recrowning the frets oiling the fretboard I polished up the top a little bit didn't do a lot to it just a little bit it's in pretty good shape I, I actually took linseed oil and wiped down the top because there's lots of scratches everywhere and I, I wiped all those scratches down I inspected the inside to make sure that the glue had penetrated all the way and it had absolutely the whole way you could see a small glue bead and and on the inside and I don't feel like it needs any cleats because of that that tight bond stuff is just iron you know it when you hold it when it's holding that top together I don't expect it to fail at that crack it may fail somewhere else but I don't think it'll fail there I've seen this many times before if this thing will focus these little short pegs if you put more than one wrap around your string post it's uh, it just it'll work its way off the top of the post I mean it's that it, they're that short a very very short post so you really can't wrap much around there uh, I've got it all tuned up it sounds good you know it's got a totally different sound than an F style obviously and this thick body um, that, let me just point out something to all of you out there that might be interested in buying a, a mandolin and you're trying to decide which one would be better it really does obviously depend on what you're what kind of music you're playing etc etc so there's a million different ideas and options but I just tell you some things in general the thicker the body the more it sounds to me like you're playing in a barrel it, it just sounds like there's a I mean it, it gives you a lot of resonance and stuff and a lot of uh, sustain but it does sound like the sound stays inside and it kind of mutes it and kind of sounds like it's in a barrel the thinner sides tend to bounce the sound right back out so that's you know and it gives you a lot more volume a lot more punch so you know these are really good for a lot of different kinds of music just depends on what you're playing they're not that great for bluegrass in my opinion obviously bluegrass is where I'm at so you know but if you were playing more of a baroque style music or you know or orchestral type style music you know something like along those lines classical that type of thing then this is an excellent choice for that kind of music but anyway here's what she sounds like tell from that it has a totally different sound than like say my 
own mandolins that I build. But, uh, you know, it's a nice mandolin, a lot of ways. It's in very good shape, I think. I don't really know how old it is. But uh, just to tell you what it says on the label, it says, the mark of better instruments, and it's got a trademark there, it's a, and it's got a crown. Then it says Regal, <clears throat> custom built, and then it says, made by Regal Musical Instrument Company, Chicago. It doesn't actually have a model number or a serial number or anything that I can see in there. And I'm looking up on the, on the uh, neck block, I don't see anything there as far as a number or anything goes. Uh, it says Regal up here. Made in Chicago. The only other thing that probably could be fixed on this thing is this down here. This isn't right. I, I didn't do that, obviously. Somebody else did that. I But I just left it. I thought, why? He was just wanting the crack fix. And again, this was one of those budget jobs. Get it, Just get it up in plain condition as fast as you can. It does hold a pick at about the seventh fret there. Um, it's not real tight, but it holds it. So, you know, anyway, it's up in pretty darn good shape. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking a look.